What's going on guys, welcome back to another video. So in this video, I'm gonna show you how to pick a winning product every single time. Now, I know that might seem like a bit of an over-exaggeration, but what I'm gonna show you in this video and the sorts of things to look for in a product and also the sorts of things to avoid. So to give you a quick example then, what most people tend to do, especially beginners, is they'll go onto AliExpress, they'll look for a product that has thousands of thousands of orders, such as some of these kitchen products like this stainless steel sponge holder that's $4.29, has 27,000 orders, this next product, 26,000 orders, this garlic press, 22,000 orders, and they think that because there's loads and loads of orders, because there's thousands of orders, it must be a good product, but that's not always the case, and in this video, I'm gonna show you why, and also show you the sorts of things you should be looking for. Before we jump into that, though, I just wanna take a very quick second to say thank you to everybody who's voting and interacting with the channel recently, so I'm trying to be a bit more active to learn about you guys guys and what kind of content you want to see and last week I put out a post asking you guys what you think is the hardest part about Shopify dropshipping and you may have heard me speak about in the past then the three kind of elements or the three keys to a successful business on Shopify which are of course the product the store itself and of course your marketing your Facebook ads or however you decide to sell your product um, and what's actually quite surprising is that it was like a 60% favor for finding the right product it was 39% for actually marketing the product which was quite interesting because in my opinion the marketing is definitely the hardest thing because it's always changing you have to keep kind of adapting the strategies that you use and only 1% out of over 100 votes like one person actually voted for building a Shopify store itself so obviously I out these videos for you guys so expect to see a lot more content on those two heavily voted topics so over the next few weeks then i'm going to be putting out a lot more content that's going to help you guys find those winning products and of course once you've found those products how to sell them successfully as well so that's the topic of the video thanks for tuning in hope you guys enjoy it um, and let's jump straight into it okay so a good place to start this video off then is probably to take you back to that example i gave you in the introduction and just explain a little bit further or give you the reasons why these aren't very good products to drop ship so i think there's probably four or five different reasons number Number one is the fact that these order numbers are on AliExpress and that doesn't always translate into success on Facebook because what a lot of people don't realize, especially beginners, is that AliExpress, their biggest custom is end users. So when a product gets 22,000 orders, the bulk of those orders are going to be end users and somebody paying so for example if we take this garlic press it's two dollars fifty it's going to be a lot easier for somebody to pay two dollars fifty for that than say twenty five dollars and for somebody who's a middleman who has to advertise that product which is essentially what a dropshipper is and does um, it's going to be a lot more difficulty to get somebody to pay ultimately 10 times the price of what they can buy it direct and that brings me on nicely then to reason number two is that these products they're just too cheap there's not enough margin in them to sell them on any platform in my opinion so typically when I'm working with a product or considering a product one of the pieces of criteria that I kind of use as like a must have if it doesn't fit this one piece of criteria then I pretty much throw the product out. I might have it on my website on the off chance that somebody buys it as an impulse buy, but if I'm trying to advertise it directly and use Facebook ads to sell a product, in my opinion, there has to be at least $15 of room, if not more, on top of what you buy the product for. So what exactly does this mean? If we take, for example, this garlic press again, we can see that shipping is give or take, it's a dollar. Let's round it up to a dollar so it's nice and easy to calculate. The product price is $2.50. So it's gonna cost us $3.50 to get this delivered to our customer. For us to make a profit on this product, we need to be able to sell it for $3.50 plus our Facebook advertising costs. Now, I like to work kind of worst case scenario on a $15 purchase price for a cheap product like this. Obviously, if you're selling a product that's $100, $200, then your cost per purchase is probably going to be a bit higher so if we take that very minimum profit margin that i like to work with of 15 dollars, we add that to the 350 that means we'd have to sell this product for 1850 as a minimum and because of the type of product it is 1850 is a lot of money most people who see this product they'll be able to use common sense to work out what is a decent or realistic price for it and therefore it's going to be really difficult to do to sell it at such a high price moving on to reason number three i'm going to go for it's not unique enough so if you try and sell products products that are very unique. So for example, with a garlic press, it's not unique. It's 
not going to be unique to a particular brand or to a particular customer, which means if somebody sees and comes across you selling this product, even if they really like the product and it's slightly on the expensive side, because it's not a very unique product and it's easily sourceable from so many other places, then the it kind of like increases the chance quite highly and significantly that people are just gonna go straight to Amazon to try and find it. Whereas if you have a really unique product that's gonna be difficult to find anywhere else from any other business, then people are much more likely to commit to you and buy it from you. Point number four is it's a boring product. Trying to advertise a garlic press in a interesting way to capture people's attention online, especially on Facebook, it's gonna be really difficult to do in my opinion. If you think about it, and the kind of like mindset or mind frame that people are in when they're on Facebook, they're typically a little bit brain dead, I would say. They're not really thinking about what they're doing. They're just kind of scrolling through their newsfeed, looking at, um, checking up on what their friends are doing. They may even be talking to their friends. So to try and advertise and market a garlic press in such an exciting way that's gonna kind of snap them out of that rhythm of just scrolling, it's gonna be really, really difficult to do in my opinion. And therefore, your chances of success are gonna be very, very slim. And this kind of brings me on to the fifth and final point is that there's no real kind of specific audience or there may be a specific audience of people who are really passionate about cooking and really and like garlic is one of their favorite favorite ingredients, they love to cook with it, but you have to take into consideration the platform that you're gonna be selling the product on. And because my specialism is Facebook ads, that's always the kind of um, mindset or the way I'm thinking. I'm always thinking, can I actually target somebody on Facebook with this product? And yes, you can target people who have an interest in cooking and an interest um, in kitchens and things like that, but I like to try and be as specific as possible. And I like to try and find a product that kind of fits a sub niche that you can target. So, so to give you an example of this then, I like to think of it as like targeting a niche within a niche. And the easiest example to give is the dog niche because within the dog niche, there's so many other things which you can target on Facebook. And therefore it makes it super easy to sell products that are super specific to a certain type of audience. And one way to think of this is that rather than sell a dog harness that is suitable for every single dog type is to sell a harness that is specific to say just pugs because it says pugs on it or has pictures of pugs on it or something like that. Because then when somebody comes across it, especially if it's a pug owner and you you can actually target people who have that sort of connection, then they're much more likely to notice the product because it's so much more specific for them, if that makes sense. And so with that being said, I didn't pick that garlic press as a random example. They're kind of like the five biggest places in which I see people going wrong when it comes to their product selection. And before we move on to the things that you should be looking for in a the product, then let's go over a very quick recap. So number one, do not judge a product based on how many orders it has on AliExpress. Number two, avoid products that aren't unique enough. If they're products that are easily sourceable from pretty much any general department store, Amazon or eBay, people are just gonna go straight to those websites to buy them. Number three, if you're selling a boring product, it's gonna be really difficult to grab people's attention when you're advertising it. Number four, stay away from products that are too cheap. If you can't sell a product for a minimum of $15 on top of what it costs you to buy and deliver that product, then stay away from it. And point number five is try and pick products that are specific to an audience that you can target. And so with that being said, if you're still with me, still watching this video, I just wanna say thank you, I really do appreciate it. And let's now move on to the things that you should be looking for. Okay, so moving on to the things that you should be looking for. And if you do this one thing, then I can guarantee that you will pick a winning product every single time. And that one thing is platform validation. So you need to find validation on the platform in which you're planning to sell that product on. And because I have a specialism or a focus mainly on Facebook ads, I've been running Facebook ads now for going on six years nearly, then that is always my specific focus. And that is the platform in which I am looking for validation on about a particular product. And so I'm gonna show you what this looks like and how you can find it. And using paid softwares and services is a great way to do this, but there is a free way about doing it also. Okay, so to show you an example then of a proven winning product this is essentially what you need to be looking for in terms of platform validation you are looking for all the signs that a product is selling well on that particular platform because if you have if there's stone cold evidence that product is selling well on that platform 
you know it's a good product that can be sold on that platform and therefore you can sell that very same product of course as long as you can source it so we can take this facebook ad here we'll take a quick second just to watch the ad so you can see exactly what the product is Okay, so that's the product. It's a Bluetooth sleep mask. You can connect your phone, play music, sleep stories in your ear and at the same time fall asleep. So it's a comfortable alternative version to, it basically combines having earphones and a sleep mask all into one. So a great product. And the reason why I can say it's a great product is because if we take a look at the reactions on Facebook, we can see it's got 7,000 likes, 500 loves, so on and so forth, 2,000 shares and 6,000 comments. And there's only one way that a post gets this sort of engagement and that is by somebody paying to run ads, to run traffic to this post. And we can double check this, double confirm this. If we go into Facebook and take a look at the page that's actually selling this product, they only have eight, they only have 700 likes. So there's no way that an ad is gonna get that sort of engagement from a page that only has 700 organic likes, which tells us one thing is that these guys are paying to run traffic and ads to this product. And that in itself tells us something else as well. Nobody pays to run traffic to a particular post for this long. So it's first seen on Monday, September 27th and last seen February 9th, so a few days ago. So nobody pays to run ads or run traffic, sorry, to a particular post unless it's making them money. Another really important thing that we can look for when it comes to platform validation is if we take a look at the actual post on Facebook and we go into the comments, what we're looking for is people saying whether they like the products or not or whether they actually bought the product or not. Because again, it's inarguable evidence. It's stone cold evidence that people are buying this product so let's take a look now we can see jessica ram is saying maybe i need these i do love my eye mask we have rain who said mine arrived a few days ago and i finally had a decent sleep um, the mask is comfortable and has a long battery life so that's somebody who actually bought the product and confirmed it's a good product this person has said that they actually love theirs it's super and it's a super buy and they work absolutely perfect kerry has said that she ordered this and it arrived two weeks and it's brilliant jennifer says she has it and it's brilliant this person says they have one and they absolutely love it caroline says one of my greatest purchases i love these so comfortable so what we can see is there's loads and loads of people who have bought this product and they absolutely love it this is exactly what you are looking for if you want to pick a guaranteed winning product every single time is these exact platform validation evidence now obviously i used a paid tool to find out this information in my opinion they're a worthy investment especially if you get the right one however for those people on a tight budget there are three alternatives and i'm going to show you the best one it can sometimes take a bit of time to actually find exactly what it is you're looking for, but this is essentially what you have to do um, in this case. So just simply head onto Facebook in the search bar, put in the product, go down to videos, and then Facebook will show you all the sorts of videos that contain the keywords in which you've used. If you're struggling to find posts that look like ads try adding keywords such as buy now or order now or order here so it could be dog bed order here or dog bed get yours now so if we take a look at this one at the top we can see it's got 1.4 million views so that's what we're looking for as well we're looking for the posts that have the most views and the most comments and the most engagements because they're the ones that we're going to be able to learn the most from and from this one we can see 1.4 million views and 5,000 comments so if we open these up again we're just looking for the same sort of thing we're looking for people posting to say they've bought the product and they've enjoying the product when looking through the comments what you can also do instead of most relevant you can go to newest so you can see just how recently people are commenting on so this will actually tell you whether people are still seeing the ad whether the page is still paying to drive traffic to it or not and then let's go for view more comments and see if we can actually see someone who's bought one so i've ordered one of these and i'm being charged for it but i've not heard anything so that's good and bad well good for us drop shippers because it shows that people are buying it bad for these guys because they're not fulfilling the orders by the sounds of it same thing from barbara so would like to get mine that i ordered in june so that's really bad make sure that you honor your orders of course 
Ames asking, how do I order one, which is good. It's showing buyer's intent. However, this comment was from 37 weeks ago. So that in itself tells us this product may be outdated by now. And so with that being said then guys, I'm gonna wrap the video up there. Um, I feel like I've kind of put across the points I wanted to in this video. The key takeaway from this is to look for platform validation because I have a specialism in Facebook ads and Facebook ads are very generous in the fact that they tell you the sorts of engagements and you can read the comments. It makes that product selection process so much easier. If you have any comments or questions or video suggestions, I'd love to hear them. I do read every single comment, so just post them down below. And one very final quick note then before you go is if you are looking for a mentor, somebody to work with you one-on-one -on -one and essentially hold your hand throughout the process and take you from day one as a complete beginner from scratch to having a fully fledged and functioning business that's bringing in consistent sales on a daily basis. So if you'd like more information on that, just comment the word accelerator down below. I'll reply to you and I'll send you a link where you can book in a call with me. We'll speak one-on-one, -on -one. we'll discuss your goals and see if I can help you achieve them. Thanks for watching guys. I'll see you in the next video.